Okay, so in this unit, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about filling up the classroom with tennis balls. And, uh, this unit is going to be focusing on circumference, area, and volume. Okay, so as a warm up, I want you all to find uh, the answer to questions one, two, and three right here at the top of your page. And just as a reference, I've got the circumference, area, and volume formulas up here at the top. So pause the video, take a second, and then we'll talk about them. All right, so it says, number one says, find the circumference of a circle with a radius of five inches. So radius of five inches. I always underline all the info that it gives me. And then, so I know radius is five inches. And now I'm trying to find their circumference. So circumference formula is C equals two pi R. Well, I know what R is, R is five, right? So I can say circumference is equal to two pi times five. Okay, so 2 pi times 5, that's the same thing as 10 pi, because 2 times 5 is 10. 10 pi is the same thing as 31.42 inches. Okay. Uh, number 2, it says find the area of a circle with a radius of 4 centimeters. So finding area when we're given radius of 4 centimeters. So R is equal to 4 centimeters. Okay. And since we're doing area, we can say area equals pi r squared, which equals pi times 4 squared, which equals 16 squared, because 4 times 4 is 16, so 16 pi is equal to 50.27 uh, square centimeters. Because remember, area is a unit of uh, squared, okay? So we're looking in two directions, so it's going to be 50.27 squared centimeters. And then the last one, question three, it says find the volume of a sphere. So volume of a sphere with the radius of three inches. So we know R is equal to three inches. And I'm trying to find the volume. So volume is equal to four thirds pi R cubed. So all I need to do is plug in the three for R. So I've got four thirds pi times three cubed. Well, three cubed, here I'm going to rewrite four thirds pi 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, right? So that's 27. So I've got 4 thirds times pi times 27, and if you plug that in your calculator, you should get 113.1 cubic inches. Okay? All right. So uh, tennis ball problem. It says, answer the question in complete sentences and show all work. So it says, uh, a tennis ball has a radius of approximately one and a quarter inches. Anytime you are given info like this, always underline, highlight, star, do something to make it stand out, right? So radius of one and a quarter inches. Stacked end to end about how many will fit in a one, by, a one foot by one foot by one foot cube. Round your answer to the nearest whole number. So if we're thinking of this as a cube, right here okay I have a cube and I'm trying to see how many tennis balls can fit in this thing so I'm looking at height depth and width okay and I'm looking at trying to put these tennis balls in here to see how many of them can actually fit, okay? So I know that this is one foot, okay? All the way around, one foot and on every side, right? So let me ask, and I know that the tennis ball is one and a quarter inches. So let me ask you, uh, how many, or excuse me, what should we do with these units of measure? I've got feet and inches. I should make them the same, right? I should make them the same. So what I want to do is I want to try and figure out how many inches are in a foot. I'm going to do everything in feet. So remember, if you remember converting yesterday, we said that one foot is equal to 12 inches, right? Okay. So uh, we're going to be using this as our measurement instead of one foot. Um, now, we know that the radius of one of these tennis balls, the radius 
is 1.25 inches. Okay. Well, the width of a tennis ball is not just the radius, right? It's the entire diameter. So if the radius is equal to 1.25, that means the diameter is double that. It's all the way across. So it's going to be 2.5 inches. So I want to use 2.5 inches for this because I'm trying to measure the width or just how many can fit in here. Okay. So we're using 12 inches as the width of the box or the size of the box. And we're using 2.5 inches as the diameter of the tennis ball. Um, so if I'm trying to see how many tennis balls can fit inside this box, right? I've got 12 inches for the box, correct? And I'm trying to see how many two and a half inch uh, tennis balls can fit inside. So what I can do is I can create a ratio to try and figure this out. So 12 inch box, two and a half inch tennis ball. How many times can two and a half inches go into 12? If you did 12 divided by 2.5, you get 4.8, right? And it's telling us round to the nearest uh, whole number. So uh, when we're rounding, we're working with a real world application here. We can't really fit. So the max amount is 4.8 tennis balls. We can't fit that fifth one, can we? And there's no really such thing as a, a 0.8 tennis ball. So we're going to have to round down to four tennis balls. So there will be four tennis balls per side of this uh, cube, okay? So we'd have a cube where there's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So in each direction, there will be four tennis balls. And now we're trying to see how many total tennis balls they have. Well, remember how we had um, height, width, and depth to this cube. So that means this cube has three dimensions. So if there are four tennis balls in each direction, then to find the total number of tennis balls, we would go four times four times four. And if you do four times four times four, you will get 64 tennis balls. So in total, there are 64 tennis balls that can fit inside this box. All right, question two, it's giving us um, tennis balls again. We're going to be using the same tennis ball measurement, okay? So we have uh, a diameter of 2.5 inches, okay? And this time it's asking us, given a classroom measures 10 feet by 12 feet by 8 feet, about how many tennis balls will fit in the classroom? Assume all furniture has been removed. So we have this, uh, these measurements for a classroom. Now remember, if we're using two different measurements, we want to convert one of them to keep it the same. So I'm going to convert these feet into inches. So 10 feet is the same thing as, well, 10 times 12, because there's 12 inches per foot. So 10 times 12 is 120 inches. Uh, 12 feet times 12 is equal to 144 inches. Okay. And then 8 feet times 12 gives me 96 inches. So these are my measurements for the classroom, okay? And so what I want to do is I want to see, uh, find the number of tennis balls that can fit in this size room. So what I want to do is I want to divide each side by the size of the ball. And the reason I want to do that is the same reason I did it up here. You see how I try to squeeze as many tennis balls in each direction of this cube as I could? I'm trying to do the same thing here. And the way we figure it out, the max amount that each side of the uh, cube could have was by dividing. So we would do the same thing right here. So uh, 120 inches divided by 2.5 inches. That's going to give me 48. And then 144 divided by 2.5, that's going to give me 
And then uh, 96 divided by 2.5, that's going to give me 38.4. Okay? Now remember, I can't have 0.6 of a tennis ball or 0.4 of a tennis ball, so I'm going to have to round down. So I've got 48 times 57 times 38. And if you multiply those, you should get 103,968 tennis balls. Okay, so that's how many will fit in the room. And then question three, if we stack the tennis balls interlocking, how would this affect our estimate? So it's asking us, instead of stacking them in these past two problems, we've just been stacking them like this, just like normal tennis balls, one after another, one on top of another, so on and so forth for infinity. Instead of doing it like that, what happens if we stack them like this? So the first row looks like this. Next row would look like this. So they're kind of staggered. Next row looks like this. And so on and so forth. You get the picture. We're interlocking these um, tennis balls. So what do you think would happen if we did that? Well, do you think this is more sa uh, space saving um, than this one? Because it looks like it. So what we could say was it would um, increase the amount of tennis balls Uh, that would fit because there would be less empty space. So that would fit because there is less empty space. Okay. And that's all we have for today's notes. Um, so we were just, the main takeaway is being able to estimate um, the size or uh, volume of shapes given, well, one, the formulas, and also we're trying to solve real world applications such as, oh, I wonder how much, how many tennis balls we can fit in this room. So we're not only using um, circumference, area, and volume, we're also using ratios and proportions like we did on day one.